Hello YouTube, thanks for coming back. In this video, we're gonna show you about manifluxing and pressure testing. Manifluxing isn't complicated if you don't understand what it's about. We're gonna take the mystery out of manifluxing, um, magnetic particle inspection. And we're gonna take you to the back of the shop and we're gonna just show you how you do it so that you understand what manifluxing is all about. Okay, now we're in the back of the shop and we're gonna talk about magnifluxing. I'm gonna show you how to magnaflux. I'm gonna tell you what it's about. Not that you're gonna do this at home yourself, who knows, but it's a big magnet. We either have a mechanical magnet over here or we have an electromagnet that plugs into the wall socket. Both are the same. You can use either or, but we're gonna use this, my, fa my favorite, um, to magnaflux this block. And basically, you can only magnaflux uh, something that's magnetic. If you hear people say they took their Honda head to a shop and they magnafluxed it, it didn't happen. You cannot magnaflux aluminum. It has to be magnetic. Basically, this is a fine powder and we can sprinkle on and you can see exactly where it goes into because wherever there's a crack, it's gonna polarize it and it's gonna go right into that crack there. That's why when you magnaflux, you cannot have an oily block. The very first thing we did to this block when it came in the shop is we hot tanked it and got rid of all the oils. If there's any oil in a crack, it's not gonna show up in a magnaflux. So it must be perfectly clean and perfectly dry. Okay, I've highlighted where the cracks are. That's what we need to know. We need to know where are the cracks. Now we know where the crack, because we magnafluxed it. Now we need to know, do they leak? Not all cracks leak. If we know they leak, then it's easier to make a decision, are we gonna put it back in the service or are we gonna take care of that crack? Does it leak or does it not leak? That's what we wanna know. So basically, what we wanna do is we wanna put a plate over the top. We have d different plates we use. Here's a torque plate we can use. Um, I'm showing you, I'm showing you right now with this plate because this is something you could do at home. You take a piece of metal, you just get your gasket, you lay it out there, you cut it out, you take your piece of rubber, it could be an inner tube, stacked three or four times, it could be the original head gasket. It doesn't matter what you use, but you're gonna seal the top of it with a plate. We're gonna put all the bolts down. And then on the front of the engine, we're gonna put a plate as well. And we're gonna put a plate on the front with a thick gasket where the water pump goes. So this plate's gonna go up here in front where the water pump goes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pressurize the whole cooling system to 30 pounds of air pressure. We can push air through a place that water would never go. So it's an excellent way to check a block because we're actually gonna pressurize this block. We're gonna be using a gauge set up on it. You can make one of these at home. We're gonna put a gauge with air. We've got 30 pounds of air. We're gonna push it in. We're gonna close it off and we're gonna see if it holds pressure. How long does it hold pressure? And if it doesn't, now we can use soap and water and we can find the leak. We can actually spray soap and water throughout this. Anywhere it's leaking, it's gonna foam up. So with using the visual, we're using air, we're using pressure. If it's leaking from up here on top, where we've marked, well then we're gonna go and tag it as it is a leak. If the cracks don't leak, what does that tell us? It is cracked, but it doesn't leak. It could be put back into service. So pressure testing is really, really a good tool to use because this is gonna tell us for a fact if it can hold pressure. When you put this back into service, we wanna make sure it can hold pressure. If we were to have put a sleeve in here and there was a crack in the cylinder, we're actually also looking around the sleeve, does it hold pressure? because not only is it a sleeve for the bore, we're actually gonna make sure that it doesn't leak um, into the combustion chamber. So pressure testing is a must on a flathead forward. It's probably a must on all kinds of things. On a flathead forward, I would not put a flathead forward back into service without it being pressure tested. I hope you enjoyed the series so far. I hope you got a little insight on magnafluxing and pressure testing. The next go around, I think we'll talk about cylinder, cylinder boring, cylinder sleeving. There's a comment section in the bottom. Leave a comment. What would you like to see? This is our interactive, we do read them. We wanna keep these videos going if you like them. Like I said, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. As for me, I'm getting back to work.